next. Tragedy strikes. Accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911, when a little boy falls into strong currents. The first thing that went through my head was, he's dead already. It's the family dog that alerts his rescuers on Rescue 911. Vacations usually leave us with a scrapbook of pleasant memories. Every year, Danette Emmer and her two children spend the better part of the summer at her father's house in the Colorado River. Her husband, Lyman, joins them every weekend as work allows. When they arrived July 6th of 1992, they were looking forward to another enjoyable stay. But this year, their trip did not turn out the way they had pictured. Compared to the other parts of the Colorado River, it is one of the most quiet. But the current is very deceiving. When you get in it, as soon as you get in it, you are carried away by it. My boy, Neil, you know, he doesn't know how to swim. Even contrary to belief, he thinks he does. When he talks about going to the river, He's really looking forward to see Bella. You know, obviously he wants to see Grandpa, but you know, Bella comes out in the same breath. The two of them are pretty inseparable. Wherever Neil goes, Bella's there. I was going home because I had to get back to work. Right. Some of this? I told the kids that I loved them and I'd see them Friday and hopped in the van and we were off. Neil, you make sure you put that life jacket on if you're down by the water. Understand? See you guys Friday. You guys hungry? You want some sandwiches? Yeah. Okay, let's go. At that point, I went inside, told the kids to stay away from the water. Then my oldest boy, LJ, had come in. I told LJ to run down to the neighbors Neil. to check to see if he Bella. had wandered down there. Neil! Bella! I just didn't know which way he had gone. A quarter mile downriver, Rick DeJarnet and his son Ricky were relaxing on their dock. While I was laying there in the chair, I got splashed. And I figured that it was my youngest son playing over there in the bay. I looked over, and Bella was watching out in the water. The dog was trying to tell me something I could tell. Yeah, it looks like Neil. Ricky, it is Neil. Yep, come on, quick. My dad jumped in the water, then Bella went in right after him. Once I dove into the water, being at that height, I could not see him anymore. The first thing that went through my head was, he's dead already. My fear is that I'm not gonna be able to find him. He's gone too far under. About that time, I looked over, and out of nowhere, Bella was there. So my first instinct right then was, okay, I've gotta to swim towards the dog. She had followed him this far down the river. She had to be still trying to keep up with him.
When I finally reached the dog, sure enough, there was Neil. I picked him up. He was pale white. There was no pulse. Just the thought of, here's a three-year-old little boy. He can't die yet. He's, he's too young to die. Groundbreaking episode of Dr. G, Medical Examiner. We've got someone that has suffocated at least one child, probably another. Two bodies. My job was to figure out what happened. And only one witness holds the answer. I turned to the detective and said, this is a homicide. Now it's a whodunit. Find out for yourself why Dr. G is considered fascinating and compassionate. Dr. G, Medical Examiner. Friday at 9 on Discovery Health Channel. Rescue 911 continues next on Discovery Health Channel. One thing that I thought about at this time was that, you know, what if I knew CPR? Maybe I could save this kid. Diane DeJarnet was back at the house. When LJ came looking for his little brother, go see if he's down there. I told him my son Ricky was down at the dock and he should go look down there. Find him? No. She's LJ Ricky came back to me and gone. said, go get your mom. "I think something's wrong because Ricky is downriver. Yeah. My children are not allowed to be downriver because past our place there is nothing there." When we finally got to the shore, we're stuck oh, down there. You cannot swim against this current. Talk to me, Neil. After giving him some air and stuff several times, I saw no reaction. I really started to panic then. Bella was sitting there right beside us, just watching. I thought, there's got to be another way to do this. Oh, Neil, come on. Then just out of somewhere, came up with the idea, OK, give him a little air, throw him over my shoulder. Come on, Neil. Come on. That's it. Spit. Come on. Finally, I heard something. Come on, gotcha. Go on, wait a minute. This might work. So I threw him over my shoulder again. The prettiest sight was just seeing him spit up water. But we still have the problem of how do we get back? Rick started to panic when he saw the boat. He was he was glad that help was there but he knew he had to get Neil into the boat and was afraid to go back out into the current with him. There's nobody, you gotta get him in the boat. The adrenaline just pumped in. I just grabbed him with one hand, picked him up and started swimming towards the boat. Is he breathing? Is he breathing? Neil was breathing by that time, but he wasn't awake. He wouldn't keep his eyes open. He was just limp. He was far from okay. He needed help. I was getting very nervous that I didn't get to him in time. Uh, something I did was wrong. I was just praying that he was going to be all right. He'd be the same child that he was when he fell in. I saw the Dijarnets pulling up. All I did was turn around and run to call 911. I don't know where it is. I don't know where we are. Dennis, who are you talking to? When I took him, he was bloated. His body just wasn't the same, and he was in and out of consciousness. And it just hit me then that what had really happened. Rescuers with Blythe Ambulance Service were dispatched to the scene. I couldn't speak. I was so afraid. I was scared that he would die. And my mom and my dad and me love him. It's been a year since the incident. Neil, now four years old, escaped without any injuries. I don't know what it would be like to be without my son. Just the thought of that and how close he came. And I want to thank the good man upstairs again that it, it wasn't his time. It's our time that we can share together for the rest of our life. It's a tough lesson to learn. It, it's too bad it had to happen this way. I could be one less child right now. And as far as it changed my life, he does not go anywhere without his life jacket on. Oh, it's, it's just great. I love my dog. 
I'm most grateful for Bella, the dog, for Rick, for their whole family. I could never thank them enough. Good girl, Bella. Bella, I think, is the real hero. Without her, I don't think I would have been able to find him. I wouldn't have woken up to even see him float by. He would have just floated by, and nobody would have known a thing. When I see Bella today, it's just, you know, it's, we almost have a special bond now, too. I love Bella. I could tell you saved me. This is our hero. We all should take first aid and CPR courses every year. By learning basic life-saving techniques, we might be able to save the life of someone we love. This series is dedicated to all the men and women who answer our calls for help and are there when we need them most. I'm William Shatner. Join us again next week for more true stories on Rescue 911. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.